Mr Speaker. The Reverend Dr David Clark. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, we are supporting this bill. We are very encouraged by the government's commitment to encouraging collaboration uh, across the agricultural sector um, in question here, the horticulture sector. It's um, well known, of course, to all New Zealanders watching this debate uh, that real benefits can come from uh, an industry working together. Um, Fonterra is the example that's put up uh, time and again. And uh, on both sides of the House, efforts have been made to encourage industries to work together, uh, members of an industry to work together, uh, in order to achieve higher prices and higher value goods for export and uh, to achieve market penetration um, that can most easily be achieved by scale. Um, I can think of an example uh, locally um, when I was on an economic development um, uh, agency in the South Island, the Otago Ford uh, it was called, and it was a mechanism rather than an agency, a mechanism, an economic development mechanism that uh, accessed government funding um, for projects involving collaboration between different councils in uh, different local territorial authorities, um, territorial local authorities, I shall say, um, TLA, three-letter acronym. Um, and in the example I'm thinking of, it was required that the different TLAs uh, agreed uh, a priority in order to access government funding. The, the different TLAs agreed that there would be real merit in um, working on getting some government funding, having pulling the industry together to get a marketing strategy to sell apples at a premium. Simple proposition. It turned out absolutely nothing needed to happen to the apples, but they were able to be marketed at or, as organic apples um, because uh, a marketing strategy was put together, market research was conducted, um, and thereafter they achieved a 15%, I think it was, um, price surplus in markets, and that has happened ever since. A required collaboration with, within the industry to put forward the proposal, an agreement about how the uh, apples were going to be supplied and to which markets and so forth, and the result was a price premium on those products that would not otherwise have been achieved. And the simple thing was that where the apples were being grown uh, was too cold for pests. They were not being sprayed because they did not need to be sprayed at all. They were being produced organically and now, uh, as a consequence of this collaboration, they were also being marketed organically and attracting a price premium. So when industry pulls together, when it pulls its resources, it can achieve great things. And we've seen this in New Zealand time and time again. So facilitating uh, that collaboration is something to be commended. In fact, as a country, we are far too dependent on far too few commodities. And uh, anything we can do across the agricultural sector where we have natural advantages, and indeed across any sector, to encourage collaboration uh, to achieve higher value in our exports is to be praised. So uh, it's not often I can stand on this side of the House and um, speak so heartily uh, in favour of a government bill, but I do so on this occasion, and it does uh, bring me pleasure. We like to be constructive on this side of the House, despite the fact that we think overall um, the government has lost its way, that it's getting a little bit out of touch on, on many issues. Um, uh, but uh, we hope, um, I guess, uh, I, expect, I expect it will happen more next year that the government is, um, is, is to be congratulated as they adopt our policies in the run into the election. Uh, we'll see, we'll see. Um, but uh, I, I expect that um, it's nice on this occasion to be able to do it uh, without yet being in the run-up to the election. Good on them for running with a good idea. Uh, they don't always get it wrong on that side of the House, more often than we'd like, but not always. This bill um, does have the primary purpose uh, to promote the effective export marketing of horticultural products. There's not much not to like with that. Um, and in fact, the industry, of course, itself has welcomed the progress uh, of the bill. They are, uh, are looking towards the opportunity and I hope that they do seize that opportunity. There are times when empowering legislation is put in place but, um, but because of internal competition factors or personalities that, that uh, nettle is not seized. And of course we know plenty of other industries that could benefit from greater collaboration in the uh, sheep and in, in, in the uh, lamb export sector. Um, we've got firms that have competed um, internally and have uh, engaged in a race to the bottom where collabor greater collaboration could have attracted price premiums offshore. And that's a real struggle to get there and we would encourage the government to consider further 
how it can assist industries to work together, how the incentives can be set up to encourage existing market players in New Zealand to work together to achieve the best value for New Zealand as a whole. Within New Zealand, uh, it is a small market, and where there is unfettered competition, it won't necessarily yield the best results for us internationally. The government set the goal of growing exports as a proportion of GDP to 40 per cent of our economy. And we know for a fact that uh, during the, the time of this government, they started around the 30 per cent mark, and they've actually dropped. They've dropped. So sadly, New Zealand is in a place where, as a proportion of our total economy, our exports have been dropping under this government. And I think, think that speaks overall to the lack of direction. I think uh, here they've stumbled upon uh, they've stumbled upon a good idea. Their promise, of course, as Mr Parker uh, asks, was to increase exports to 40 per cent of GDP. 40 per cent. And it's gone backwards. It's actually gone backwards and is now less than 30 per cent. And I think uh, the member uh, draws attention to a very important point, uh, because that was a reasonable goal to have, I think. I think setting it at 40 per cent uh, was achievable when it was set if the government had adopted the right strategies, if they had consistently adopted strategies that looked to extract the maximum value out of New Zealand produce and New Zealand industry for the betterment of the country. But unfortunately, they've neglected new export industries. Uh, they have failed to take advantage of our innovative industries here. I mean, I think of another example, uh, the biofuel sales obligation brought in by the last Labor government. I think the Honourable David Parker was responsible for that one. Very forward-looking piece of legislation. Uh, and uh, the government lost the opportunity. I'll come back to the main purpose of the bill, which of course is about uh, progress um, overall in, in effective marketing of products. Um, but, but that progress could be broadened, and that's the general point I was trying to make, sir. Uh, we welcome it in this particular instance, but marketing our products uh, appropriately um, is something that should be broadened and should be done uh, more widely um, to ensure the best value for New Zealand through collaboration. Um, the regulatory impact statement, uh, Mr Speaker, is something I've had a chance to have a quick look at, um, and uh, some of the assumptions um, in the bill uh, that haven't been fully explored uh, are drawn attention to in that document, and the one that sticks in my mind is the fact that they haven't really canvassed the industry uh, at a deep level to understand um, how widely this, this will be implemented. The government have, um, have had some discussions, and I'm encouraged by that. They've spoken with the industry and they've had positive feedback uh, on this proposal, but they haven't actually dug into the uh, flexibility and efficiency as it will be applied. They haven't actually dug in and, and, and done kind of deeper market testing to see whether the industry um, will respond to the incentives set up and uh, achieve the best possible outcomes. I think they will, and I think they've taken a good punt. I don't want to be too critical of the government here because it's moving in the right direction. Uh, I congratulate them. Uh, I just wish that they would make more of these sensible steps in the House, um, not, not like the previous bill where we debated uh, an eviscerated set of legislation that had been introduced to the House uh, before it was ready, before it had been consulted on. Here we have some legislation that has been consulted on, that takes New Zealand forward, that adds value to our exports, hopefully moves us closer to that 40 per cent target. We've got to get back over the start line, having gone backwards from 30 per cent uh, when this government took, took office, 30 per cent of uh, of GDP being exports now below that, uh, and we've got to start moving up that ladder, up the value chain, because New Zealand deserves a prosperous future. New Zealanders deserve a prosperous future. We've got the imaginative business people, we've got the entrepreneurs, but they're being held back by a government that too seldom supports the industries it purports to represent. Mr Speaker, we will support this bill. We do want this industry uh, to get ahead. We want to see uh, a more prosperous New Zealand. We want to see the efforts of our exporters uh, be rewarded appropriately, and we want, uh, of course, uh, the benefits that go with that for all of our country. So, Mr Speaker, without further ado, I do recommend uh, this bill be supported. I, I'm, I'm happy to add my voice to that uh, plea and look forward to the progress of this bill further through the House.